Hello everyone, in this video I will go over my solution to the problem named fortune telling taken from today's contest. This problem is an excellent problem on parity and some math constructive ideas. So in this problem we are basically given t independent test cases. In each test case we are given n which is the length of an array. We are given a x and y which represents the starting number for Alice and x plus 3 is the starting number for Bob and y is the desired quantity which you need to get after passing through the array of length n. So you go through the array of length n in increasing order of i for i going from 1 to n and you perform two kinds of operations. One of these two operations you need to perform at each step i. So you can either replace the current number with the current number plus i or with the current number zord with ai. So you can perform either of these two operations with the current number and with ai and you do this for all n elements in the array and in the end you get a resultant number and you need to ensure that the resultant number is y now you need to find out if alice or bob could have got the resultant number so we are guaranteed that only alice or bob could have gotten the resultant number not both of them and we are also guaranteed that either one of them would have gotten it for sure so we are guaranteed both of these are true and we need to print which one out of these two will get the resultant number. So let's take an example where we have three independent test cases. In each test case we are given the integer n. So there is a one length array which contains an element 2. And we are given that Alice's starting number is 7. That's why Bob's starting number would be 10. And the resultant value should be 9. So in this case you can see that 7 plus 2 gives 9. That's why Alice will be the friend who gets the number 9 in the end. Bob will not get 9 if he starts from 10. You can verify that also. And in the second test case, we are given a 2 length array 1 comma 3. Starting number for Alice is 0. Starting number for Bob is 3. And the element which you need to solve with is 2. So in this case, you can see that um, if you start with 0, you can perform 0 plus 1 that makes it 1 and you can do 1 or 3 which gives you 2 and that's why Alice would be the one and in the third example you should uh, read and understand why Bob is the one who ends up with a 1 after passing through the array starting from 3 so that's why the output would be Alice Alice Bob now the key idea for the solution will be to analyze these two types of operations and to come up with a constructive idea. So this idea is actually a bit hard to come up with, but you need to look at these two operations carefully. And in specific, you need to look at how ZOR works on the bits of the array. And you also need to look at the fact that the problem is asking us which one out of Alice or Bob will end up with Y. So we actually don't need to figure out whether or not they will end up. We just need to figure out the numbers x and the numbers x plus 3, what is the properties of x and x plus 3 and what is the property of this addition and the ZOR with regard to the bits. So let's try to understand that. So let's analyze the effect of the two operations on the initial number. So let's say that the initial number is x and we perform an operation of a plus ei and this is the operation of type 1. So in this case we will get x plus ei and in the second case we get ZOR ei. So if you represent that symbol for resort, you get x zord with ei. Now let's consider the bits of number x and see how the zord affects that. So if the bit, let's start from the rightmost bit uh, inwards. So let's say we are looking at the rightmost bit which is the 0th bit. So let's just analyze the 0th bit for now. And the 0th bit basically um, is either 0 or 1. So if the 0th bit is a 0, then we know that 0 zord with ei will give you 0 if ei is basically if ei is even if ei is even you get a 0 and if ei is odd you get a 1 so you should check this if ei is 2 for example 0 zord with 2 will give you 2 which is even and um, the 0th bit would be 0 in that case and if ei is odd you get a 1 for the 0th bit now, if on the other hand, the 0th bit was 1, then 1 zord with ei will give you 1 if ei is even. 
and it will give you 0 if a is odd you can again take an example for example 2 and 3 if you take 2 and 3 you will realize that if you do 1's odd with 2 you get an odd number and if you do 1's odd with 3 you get an even number that's why the 0th bit would be these cases so from this analysis we conclude that if a is odd the bit will get inverted so if you consider the two cases if you consider the bit to be 0 and the bit to be 1 if a is odd the bit always gets inverted so these are the two boxed cases in these two cases the bit gets inverted and this is actually the first key idea the idea being if you start from x and you go through all the odd elements in the array then you will realize that the bit will keep on getting inverted if you do a or and even if you consider an addition so if you consider the addition operation and if a is odd so if a is odd the addition operation will make the zeroth bit be 1 and uh, it will basically invert it inverts the zeroth bit or it inverts the parity or uh, parity and zeroth bit refer, refer to the same thing because the zeroth bit uh, refers to the parity essentially so if you add an odd number this will invert the parity and even if you zord with an odd number that will also invert the parity and that's actually the key idea which is essential for the whole problem and that idea being if you consider the first two numbers which are x and x plus 3 you will realize that x and x plus 3 are different in terms of their parity x if x is odd then x plus 3 would be even and if x plus 3 i mean and if x is even x plus 3 would be odd and vice versa so basically if you consider x and if you consider what happens to x um, as you go through the array then in the end if you get an even number if you do the same operation with x plus 3 you will get an odd number in the end however if x was initially odd and like if you go through the array and if you make x odd in the end then in that case um, x plus 3 would be even in the end so this is the ending state if x becomes uh, even in the end then x plus 3 would be odd and if x becomes odd in the end x plus 3 would be even that's why essentially we just need to look at the parity of x and x plus 3 and compare it with y so if you compare the parity of x with y and basically if you um, so let's consider some cases and let's make this more concrete but the general idea is to realize and think about it in terms of parity because uh, both addition and taking the ZOR will invert the parity and uh, let's now uh, try to make it more formal and uh, arrive at the final solution so the final solution can be described in two lines we basically take the ZOR sum or the normal sum of all the elements in the original array note that both the ZOR sum and the normal sum of all the elements will have the same parity and that's why since the parity is the zeroth bit you can either add up all the elements or you can take the ZOR sum of all the elements and you can compute uh, the remainder when it is divided by 2 and let that number be s so the key idea is that either x or x plus 3 would be the starting number now we know that if x is the starting number then if you add x and s or if you take the ZOR sum there are two possible ways which you could which you could do this you could you could either add x and s and take that to be congruent to y mod 2 or you could take the ZOR sum because as i mentioned in the beginning adding and taking the ZOR sum is essentially the same for the parity or the zeroth bit that's why you can either take x ZOR with s or you can add x and s and you need to check whether that is equal to y mod 2 now the reason why you add the numbers or you are why you take the ZOR sum is because this quantity which you computed is actually the effect this quantity is actually the final effect of all the uh, elements of traversing the array on the original number so that's why like if you compute the whole sum of all the elements and if you add that to the original number you will get the effect of traversing the array on that number and that's why um, you just need to check whether the resultant value 
so this is the final value this is the resultant this is the resultant um this is the resultant parity if this resultant parity is equal to y then we know that uh, by the problem statement uh, it's guaranteed that x would be the starting number however if the resultant parity is not congruent to y mod 2 is not equal to y when divided by 2 then we know that x plus 3 is the opposite parity and that's why x plus 3 would be the starting number the reason why this is true is because x plus 3 is the opposite parity of x and that's why x plus 3 has to be the starting number and um, we'll just essentially print x plus 3 in that case so we'll print bob in that case otherwise we'll print alice and now i'll show you the code so it's important to understand before i show you the code that adding and taking the zor sum is essentially the same and the parity is the same as the zeroth bit so you should spend some time understanding why that is true and you should also spend some time understanding why x and x plus 3 are the only two possibilities from the problem statement and why just parity works for computing alice or bob so i'll just show you the code now so in the code um i use some predefined um, values but you don't really need a lot of them so you essentially just need um you don't even need a fast i i think so you, you can just use ll for long long and um you could uh, use fast i if you want otherwise it's not needed um then for each test case we will take in the value of n x y we will use ll for long long because the array a and uh, i think even the zor sum and the element y can be up to like 10 power of 15 that's why it's um, obviously clear that since o of n is the algorithm and that will obviously easily work in one second even uh, like up to 5 into 10 power of 7 operations works in one second generally so 10 power of 5 operations will easily work uh, with like it will be around 500 times faster than normal so uh, we can use long long uh, that won't add any constant factors too much then we will take in the values of each element in the array and we will uh, compute the zor sum of the elements or you can compute the normal sum also either ways we know that the parity or the zero bit will be the same then if the parity of the zor sum zor with the original number if that quantity is equal to y mod 2 then we will print alice otherwise we will print bob and that's essentially the full code and you can verify this gets accepted so i hope you like this problem and my solution uh, if you had any doubts do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you